No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I've got an absolute legend in the form of Vince Kelvin on the podcast. How are you doing, Vince? Well, I'm just a simple man. It's really good to be here. You know, I became an instant fan. I just saw the uh, Ryan Holiday episode. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He's part of uh, the people I listen to on a daily basis. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's the super Marcus good, Aurelius right? Marcus stuff. Yeah. Oh, you like the and daily stuff? And both of you. I, I love the flavor, you know? Hell, yeah. I was like, uh, I watched other episodes, and I was like, oh, my God, got to bring girls over there. It's going to be about showing your <laughs> cock. I have a rooster tattoo, so I always say, like, you want to see my cock? Ah. Where's the rooster I, actually located? Like it, on the it, pubic it's area? Close. It's right here. Oh, okay. There yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. I went back with pubes during the uh, the pandemic. Oh, yeah. How many times have you busted that line out on a on a woman? On a woman? You uh, see my cock? Uh, quite Boom. often. Yeah. Quite often. That's a, that's a, yeah. that, that seems like it would just work so consistently. It's a good test, and you'd be surprised. You know? Want to see my cock? That, that I, I mean, it's not for everybody, okay? Right. But it's all about how you say it and, mm. and, and the vibe you project. Right. But it's a great way to have people reveal themselves super fast. I used to always want to get a tattoo above my dick that said, you'll regret this. Because <laughs> I thought it was funny. But I actually had a couple different people tell me, like, you will regret that if you ah. do that. Because, like, in that moment, the girl might not get the joke. Mm, and it's kind of double meaning, you know? I really meant it just in, like, sort of a dark humor way. As in, like, ha, ha, ha. You'll I was going to get, like, a big skull. You'll regret this. My, like my <laughs> second wife told me about this guy who had a backwards head shave, backward tattoo of Jesus on his head. So mm. he, when he would go down on a girl, she could see see the face right there. Wow. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's like the question. Like, what do you want a woman to be thinking about when you're doing that? Because I have the bald spot. I have a tiny bald spot. I could probably get some little, like, tattoo right there, and they might be able to read it. Mm. Yeah. There's a classic shake well before use, but... It, occur it, it occurs to me that your haircut might prohibit you from eating pussy from time to time, or I guess maybe you just whip, wick it back when you're ready to go to war. Doggy style, <laughs> you know? There you go. Okay, so, so <sighs> for those who have been picked up on the vibes, Vince is a, a, a legend in the pickup artist game. He's got years and years and years of extreme experience with talking to women and uh, seduction and whatnot. Um, I'd like to start out by by just talking about your early days when you were a young man, though. Like, uh, tell us about your your early days. Well, I grew up in Switzerland. Okay. Beautiful parents. You know, I, I've only realized that more recently. Uh, my mom passed away last year. It was an intense oh, 2020, and uh, my dad got really sick four months at the hospital. Halfway through, they were asking us, "Like, you ready to sign papers? Long distance for me?" Wow. Uh, so it made me even more grateful of how lucky I had been growing up, you know, beautiful beings, uh, right. scored high every possible level. We traveled a lot. So I grew up in that small town in Switzerland. And then my uh, parents decided to go and spend three months in a country. That's what we could do. So we stayed in Paris, in London, in Amsterdam. Wow. And one day, you know, my uh, we could have continued like that. We were homeschooled. Uh, homeschooled and my sister started like uh, I want to go to school like every other kid and me just like a little cart man you know yeah. uh, I went like yeah I want to go to school and the moment I showed up in school I always remember I entered it was after the year had already started uh -huh. I see those two little boys fighting over a plastic truck <laughs> and my hand my energy went like way down and then there was this girl, Stephanie, there, and her friend, Angelic. And I could really s sense and, and feel and smell their hair in the distance. Uh -huh. So right away, I was more comfortable, like, hanging out with girls. Uh, I played hockey. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice. Uh, but I, I wasn't built to play hockey. I was fast. I liked it. And eventually, I got hit by a puck right there. Really? We were doing that trick where I would pass it backwards, be right by the goalie, and in case the guy didn't, didn't hit it, you know, I, I would hit, take care of the rebound. Uh -huh. But when he did it, when I passed it backwards, I got hit in the, uh, in the eye. And after that, I spent... Uh, probably a month at the hospital. And when I came back, I was told I had to wear sunglasses. Up to this day, I see a line moving, left eye, but I got used to it. Okay. But it would help me at first to wear sunglasses. 
Then something shifted. I became the guy with the sunglasses. Oh. So I started to realize, you know, it's, it's silly. It's like, it's cool. The guy with this, the guy with that. Right. Yeah. But so is, why do you choose to cover up your other eye with your hair? In, if, no, that's just the hairstyle. I'm oh, not okay. covering anything. But your, your vision's fucked up a little bit in the, in the eye oh, that yeah. you are using. And driving. Driving's not easy. I got this Dodge Challenger and I, uh, you know, my guardian angel is with me because it's very difficult. Already the Dodge Challenger is known to be one that the visibility is, is less. Than, right. And, and you got to do a full turn to reach all the way to the back. So uh, Right. But it's also interesting because uh, I love to study, you know. Uh, I got that entertaining side, but uh, really of my own, I'm like a monk. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm studying hemispheric therapy from those uh, two people. It's a couple, Al and Marilyn Sargent. So right brain connected with left eye and it crisscrosses through the body. And of course, a right eye uh, would be connected with the left brain, but by covering my right eye, I access my right brain even more. Wow. So just interesting stuff, you know? Food for thought. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So you become used to being the sunglasses guy. And what, do you feel like that just sort of like gave you some additional level of cool amongst your peers or something? It did. Everything has a plus and a minus, you know? So it became almost like a little gimmick. Uh, it made me realize, you know, just how it works and, and even as an adult you know this i meet so many guys they're awesome they're genuine oftentimes they would probably be better a, a better bet for a girl than the guy with this but girls are so fast you know at like oh the guy with this oh you're the guy with that you right. know so uh, it made me understand that it's, it's good ammunition to be the guy with something. With something special, you yeah. know, because we talk about, or in the pickup artist community, you talk a lot about peacocking, or at least they used to talk about it back when I was really paying attention to this stuff. But did you, do you look back at that and see it as kind of like a form of that? Like this was just this, this attention getting thing? Yeah, that's in pure pickup artist terminology, that would be social proof. Right. Well, working with the social dynamic. Uh -huh. The peacocking for me, I think that I, I really love to get to the core, right. not the surface. Okay. So I think that it's about honoring what we sense is right for us. Self-expression. I've always loved fashion. Mm. As far back as I can go, I love fashion. Okay. During the pandemic, I still would be like, I got to dress up, not mm. for anybody but myself. Right. So, okay, yeah, you're, you're, but describe what like the rest of your high school years were like, because I'm interested in like what, what the education in your life was like prior to you sort of getting into this line of work. Yeah, absolutely. So very rapidly, you know, my parents were giving me so much freedom with a lot of love. Right. With a lot of love. Sweden's a pretty safe place, though, uh, right? Switzerland. Switzerland, People sorry. always mistake, mistaken yeah, the two. Yeah, my bad. No, but, but it's good. I think it's, I've been to both, and I'm just being a total ignorant American yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, Swedish girls. They're responsible for that, the end of my second marriage. That is no joke right there, I mean. Oh, yeah. Europe I, went, and, I went to Stockholm for a conference to speak over there, and ooh. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, oh, the, the rest yeah. of my upbringing was... Uh, Super active, thanks to my parents, and, and they were super proactive. For example, my dad became the number one hockey coach. Wow. And a very genuine guy, not like, oh, my son's going to play or anything, just to be of service, very noble. Wow. And uh, with the hockey coach, they decided, let's take all the kids. The, the hockey coach was from Canada, Calgary. Uh -huh. Let's take 40 kids and 80 parents to Canada. And my parents said, let's do it. So they organized all those different events, larger scale, and uh, we made it. So I played tennis. I was a Boy Scout as well. Very active. And then I discovered music. Really? Uh, after the ho hockey accident, music became my new passion. Uh, when I played hockey, I, you know, I I've had a little challenge with people where just... Uh, you know, a little critical and so on. Uh -huh. Like, uh, so I got a little turned off and I, I joined the cool crowd. Okay. And uh, I was playing music at a super early age mm -hmm. in a small town, very interesting town. I just revisited, that's where Jean-Louis Chevrolet, Chevy Cars, was born. But, you know, about 40,000 people over there. Uh -huh. So the demand was greater than the supply. 
So uh-huh. suddenly there's this guy who's about 20 something uh, that's starting to gain a little bit of fame in the area. Right. And they need a drummer. They cannot find one. Somebody says, hey, there's this 14 year old. He plays drums. He's fairly good. They decide with the permission of my parent, okay, you play one gig with us. Uh, surprise the next day. Um, in the paper, big picture, and you know, just like now, catchy titles on uh, uh, social media uh, that grabs attention. So they say you're officially part of the band. Right. So then I'm hanging out with 20, 21 years old. You know, they're a uh, very like hardcore rock and roll. We play a lot of music. At 15, um, I'm asked, what do you want to do? I want to be a tattoo artist. I got my first tattoo. I was 13. Right. So, But you were still in the band, but you also wanted to yeah, do the tattoo yeah. stuff? Yeah. And what kind of music were you playing? It was like punk? or? Uh, I went through every possible phase. Like uh, It's a long time ago, but the Stray Cats became like the thing. So I mm. went hardcore, rockabilly. Right. And then uh, the birth of uh, heavy metal, new, new wave. Uh, um, and, and then uh, my parents were, again, super cool. They said, okay, you do the footwork, we'll help you. Uh, it was tough because there was a catch-22 back then. In order to acquire machines, you needed to be a member of a tattoo club. In order to be a member of a tattoo club, you needed to have your own machine. Uh-huh. You know, so they were making sure that not, not everybody would start tattooing. Right. Okay? They, they were trying to avoid the future that we now live in where, like, anybody can just become a tattoo yeah, artist. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's so easy mm. in this day and age. So I did that for a while. Again, a lot of press, youngest tattoo artist in Europe. And then I wanted to uh, really take music further. I started to play more and more instruments. And uh, to my surprise, again, I was asked, what do you want to do? I had heard about that place in Boston, Massachusetts. Yeah. Berkeley College of Music. I grew up like a half hour from there. No way. No. Wow. Yeah. And so, okay, so that's, that's how serious you were about the music. They actually pursued it and, and moved yeah. to Boston. Yeah, so I signed up Berkeley. They accepted me right away, relocated. Uh, last thing I said when I left, I was like, um, I told a buddy, uh, a buddy of mine says, you'll be back soon. I said, watch, I'm going to stay in America. How are you going to do this? I'm going to get married. So I was on a quest to get married. Oh, of course then I for met love. This, this girl, uh, she went by the name of Eric Kane mm. uh, port, uh, from Puerto Rico. Right. So, uh, and, you know, uh, I mean, everybody was staring at her in the dorms. I was like, that's it. That's her. Mm. I knew it. And, uh, and how rapidly, old are you at this point? I was 19. I rapidly dragged her to Vegas, got married super fast. And uh, wow, that girl, man, she was just very hardcore, like total kleptomaniac. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. We were in San Francisco. We come out of one of those little museums, like the World Guinness or whatever. Uh-huh. We're being chased. An alarm <laughs> is going on. She grabbed something precious from one of the display. And how long were you with her before you realized that she was a kleptomaniac? I realized pretty much right away I was in <laughs> denial. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, my God. But, you know, it was good training. That was, that was a, a woman that uh, uh, I, I wouldn't wash, uh, wish a girl like that for anybody. Mm. Oh, my God. She was like a black widow, prime black widow. How long did you last? She could have destroyed. We, we lasted two years, but it was a, it was a disaster. Right. But, but it my, allowed you to stay in the, in the country. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and I did fall in love with her, you know. Despite her. Yeah, it's her. easy for a man. <laughs> yeah. We find a sweetheart. We want to turn her into the slut, and we fall in love with the slut. Mm. We got to watch out with that. Yeah. And, and that's one thing. It takes us a long time to learn that. Right. So, um, and then uh, she passed away when she was 24. While you were still with her? Uh, we were on and off at that time. Wow. On and off. How'd she die? You know, it's still under investigation. My best guess is that uh, she was with a group of people. She OD'd and they didn't want to get any trouble and they dumped her somewhere. You mean she's, it's under investigation because they never found the body? They did find the body, oh. but you know, the best uh, information we could get, that's prior to the internet. So it wasn't mm. easy. I, I can't imagine what her mom went through. I did a little bit of my research story, uh, you know, going to the Hollywood uh, uh, police station, but they just say, uh, you know, right. I mean, g- good luck. You private investigator. I went to pay my respects uh, afterwards, realizing that she had been buried in a common grave. So, wow. Hardcore. Yeah. Crazy. But so did you guys actually get divorced or did this happen before you no, could get I'm divorced? No, I'm a widow. 
Oh. I'm a divorcee. I'm a widow. I'm about to get married again. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I got married five times. Five? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> why, like, I'm sure you look back on this and you're, you're like, why the fuck was I getting married so many times? Why did you feel like you were doing it at that time? To okay, stay in the so, country? Um, to stay in the country? Uh, no, because I was good with that. Um, some of it was genuine. Okay. Uh -huh. Before I said my second marriage was my third wife who had the, the, the thing with the tattoo, the guy who had the tattoo on his head. Second wife, we still uh, really close friends. Beautiful. But after five years, we looked at each other and we we're like, I don't know anymore. I remember I was mm. at a blockbuster video store and we were trying to find something we had not seen. And I started to hear in my, and we couldn't. In my head, I was like, this is not my reality. This is not my reality. So... You know, yeah, and part of it also was that just like the fun of it. Some some of them, they were a joke, you know, uh, mm. most of them in Vegas. Uh, on the other hand, okay, we've been very playful so far. But uh, on the other hand, um, I see it as a gift of experience because, mm. uh, yes, you know, I, I started in that community of pickup artists. I never really came from the same angle than uh, the, the, the guys from the game and so on. Mm. True, genuine love for women. And I, my debuts in terms of the, the you know, self-help spiritual work were uh, Tony Robbins. I did mm. all the schooling with Tony Robbins. And, uh, and then you name it, Les Brown, Marion Williamson, Wayne Dyer. Right. I just dived in it up to this day. I just, I, I absolutely love that. So, my teaching is very 360, okay. meaning it's not limited to, you want to get laid, let me help you with that. Right. Uh, it could uh, very well be, I, I coach married guys, I, uh, I'm helping a guy, like uh, uh, right now, I have, he's not sure should I uh, have the kid or not, divorce, you name it. Right. Okay? 360. You didn't get stuck with any crazy child support or, or alimony or anything like that with any of your ex-wives? No. You no, were no. able to move along pretty much? I, I did not. Okay. Right there. You know, I always went for a pretty good prenup. Okay. That's wood, good to know. But, yeah, uh, you're ahead of your time in that yeah, regard. I, yeah. I've been hired for that too, like uh, oh, yeah. the ultimate prenup. Nice. And yeah. how to present it. I have the very uh, rare situation of having a uh, fiancé where we both make enough money that we both want a prenup. So that's cool. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, on it. Yeah. yeah. You have an awesome situation, by the way. Oh, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Mm, thank you. I've had a podcast since 2004. So when I entered, I was like, oh, that's what it takes to really have a podcast. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. No, we sort of <laughs> just so eventually grown into it. But this is still this is a pretty uh, cheap spot. We actually have another spot that we're moving into soon that we're nice. pretty excited wow. about. Yeah. But okay. So throughout all this uh, time with all these marriages and stuff, um, would you describe yourself as just like a real uh, helpless romantic that just couldn't help but fall? for women over and over or how would you describe where you were at at that time mentally i think that all of it is like riding a bicycle okay okay meaning we got to find equilibrium mm. and uh i meet some guys and i've been there and you could catch me in certain areas of my life being there myself where it's purely coming from a place of desperation mm. okay so there's the phase of desperation then after that, there's the rebellion and there's the phase of, I want to win. Mm. It's still not complete because it's overly emphasizing. I want to feel good. I want to be looked at as being good. And that's not the true nature of the human dynamic in life. Okay. So I went from like, oh, I probably couldn't, uh, not me and so on, a constant apology. Mm -hmm. And then you, certain places at the level of technology, I'm, I'm just adorable. I have my IT clients from up north who go, but aren't you doing with technology exactly what you tell us not to do with women? Mm. Okay. And... Uh, then, you know, the phase of like, I got this, you know, I'm the best, fuck everybody. Or not necessarily that flavor. Uh, to now, you know, um, first, I, I still don't exactly know why I'm here on this planet, who I am. Mm. Catch me at a certain time, I can be the biggest asshole on the planet. Right. Catch me at another time, I can be totally brilliant. Catch me at another time, you may be like, wow, Vince Kelvin, you're actually acting a little shy. Mm. So 
it brings a great deal of peace when we no longer, like, you know, one handcuff is desperation, I'm not enough, and mm. so on, which cause constant comparing. And we personalize. We start to think it's just us. Mm. Every guy that comes to me, they're under an impression that it's just them. Yeah. Guy tells me like, oh, well, I was talking to this girl and then a little voice tells me this and that. I go, I hear that voice every day. I just don't listen to it. Mm. Okay? And the other part of the, the handcuff is, uh, you know, I have to constantly show I'm the best, I'm this mm. and that. And it comes short eventually. So I'm you, lucky uh, with age came the maturity of, uh, mm. uh, you know, it's a little bit all over the place. Part of me is full of shit. Part of me is just brilliant. I come to peace with that. Now I can work with it and find my equilibrium. Right, because you're making me think about just being young and being in high school and shit. And I feel like probably like 95% of boys in high school age, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, they basically feel like the same way where like they want women to like them. They want to be liked by everybody, but they have no fucking clue how to get there. And obviously you're just young. You have nothing to offer. It's hard to get anyone to pay attention to you from girls and stuff. And then you have that one little sliver of the population that believe that they can just f get any girl. And that's like, those are like the real badasses. But then like, I, when I think about it, it felt like it was just such a tiny group of people who had that confidence and everybody else is filled with insecurity, but kind of like projecting that they're more confident typically than they are. Like nobody wants to admit that they have absolutely no clue what they're doing socializing when they're that young, you know? Yeah, and make no mistake. I mean, uh, there's the fantasy of the natural. I've witnessed them, really? those guys. Yeah. I've learned a lot from them initially mm. i hanged out with a couple guys that really were doing well with women right but they're not only that it eventually came short i knew this guy from italy stefano stefano i mean just a riot he'd be in hollywood with flip-flops little sandals and he he'd be like stopping cars he'd be like roll it down to the window roll <laughs> down to the window and he did it with so much certainty and congruency they would roll down the windows all freaked out and it would be do you know any good discotheques around here <laughs> told, told borat before borat right and uh then he stayed at my place he would arrive he rapidly had all those pieces of paper i would say what what is that he said uh, those are where is the trash and he would those were the numbers he got during the day. Those maybe, and then the top, he would just quickly arrange them. Can I borrow your phone? And he would start to call them and meet them at night. Mm. But after that, whenever a girl would somehow say no to him, he just couldn't take it. Really? And it didn't take long in a relationship without him, you know, being like really challenged by that. So let's not fantasize about the myth of the natural. And then I love guys like uh, Ryan Holiday and so on, because even if I'm already doing well, I got to make distinctions, you know, I want to learn. Right. So we got to watch out also, because I've seen it's almost like the guy's body is so like designed for athletics he gets mm. so early like high school fame right few pass through that because they demand a little less on themselves yeah okay yeah. so for me i, I just want to study right now it's a very very unique season like this past year was just wow gave you a lot of time Ooh. to look into things and just sort of work on yourself yeah yeah but uh i eventually you know just went with it I, I i faced it right i faced it i just came back from a trip and it was very unique right definitely yeah. wait okay so you go through all these weddings and stuff when do you actually find pickup artistry or what led to that were you already studying you know a bunch of different things that sort of helped guide you in that direction it came unexpectedly. Okay. okay? Uh, I was doing fairly good being a resourceful guy in L.A. playing music. I mean, a total hustler. I would get in my car, uh, put my drum set, bass drum on a uh, front seat, even thought of putting a hat on it so I could be in the carpool lane just in case. <laughs> and I would drive as far as Corona, Riv Riverside or further, because uh -huh. I realized it was easier to get gigs and drum clients 
over there. Right. But I had a chronic tendinitis. And my passion for hypnosis, and I started to study Tony Robbins. Tendinitis is a bitch. I oh, also yeah, suffer yeah. from and this, Oh, yeah, yeah, And I was persistent friend. with it. I went yeah. seven doctors after that. I was like, well, that's it, you know. Yeah, I've kind of given up on, on fully Hollywood taking book. care of it. Yeah. Mm. Still a little fucked up. But, mm. yeah, continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah now I'm distracted by the tattoos. Very cool. But oh, yeah. um, So... Uh, and fairly rapidly, I, I really enjoyed hypnosis, hypnotherapy. I, I went fast with it. I started to emerge from teaching music at most L.A. colleges, Mission College, Valley College, and so on. Mm. I talked them into letting me teach meditation and hypnosis, which led to also teaching public speaking. Then okay. I got a glimpse of corporate coaching. Yeah. Uh, very renegade, but I turned a couple of companies around. It was good. I enjoyed it. I felt uncomfortable with the suit. Wow. So and uh, how, what do you credit that you were able to get into these lines of work? Because it feels like that would be so hard to, to break into. But you, you I said. credit my parents, mm. the, the level of encouragement, you know, to be independent. Right. But it's a little bit of a core generalization, you know, like a, uh, one of my first my first kissing experience was two girls who wanted me to kiss them in the woods. What age are we talking? Oh, I, I want to say five or six. Oh, wow. And I knew you had to use your tongue, but I didn't know exactly <laughs> how. So I licked their their cheeks. <laughs> but, so after that, I'm operating from this core generalization. Mm. So nobody should be envious of that right. because you can change your core generalization uh, through quite a bit of work and it's never going to be perfect. Okay? Right. We got to watch out because whether it was the 80s infomercial, the YouTube for three payments of 1999 or the Instagram stuff right now, like you can be this now, we got to realize, yes, it's possible. It's going to take everything. Mm. Are you, I, I want to do a class on are you willing to go through effort? I think that's the one everybody... Uh, must connect. So I attribute it to the example of my parents, the level of freedom they gave me, also sometimes no choice, and uh, just doing the footwork. Right. So suddenly I'm at a Tony Robbins event and this guy, and I'm starting, you know, this little challenge there because I'm fast at grabbing participants, even though I, I got the leadership award from Tony Robbins. Mm. So that's starting to be a little bit of a problem. Uh, we're doing this thing where we, we're in a deep trance, all the trainers in training, and we got to draw a poster. And on my poster, I use lipstick, and it says three sums, four sums, reverse gang bang. And I'm like, <laughs> Yes, I can do this. I can do this. And those in charge go, I don't know about that. <laughs> Isn't Tony this Robinson? about live your dreams? But I, I love Tony, and I went back to it with a little more humility than initially. So I, I, eventually, uh, this one guy goes like, uh, wow, are you, are you teaching? Uh, are, are you studying Raj Jeffries? Because in that moment, it didn't occur to you that anybody would maybe be offended by you talking about reverse gangbangs in this sort of self-help setting uh it was al almost like an omission you know mm. uh, whenever we go into something extreme there's got to be an omission okay right uh, Definitely. you know like uh, mma guy has got to admit like you're gonna get hit uh, i did two years of taekwondo but the first time we had to just do it with an actual human being i was like i don't think that's for me <laughs> yeah. oh shit my rib <laughs> so so ross jeffries was like one of the first people in the pickup uh space i kind of remember this name yeah but i don't yeah, remember yeah. much about him yeah absolutely okay and so, so people assumed that you probably already knew about him because of some of the stuff you were talking about? Yep. Oh. And then um, I connected with him. I brought him a girl that was a little bit bizarre, you know. Uh, he, was, he was on Fox News at night, uh, remote from L.A. with uh, East Coast. Uh -huh. And uh, he challenged me. Uh, he said, I think, number close, the girl uh, that, that's at the reception. Uh, the entrance or something like that. Number close means get the phone. Number. Yeah, so so we became uh, close buddies. I, I was a little young, you know. I was like the go-getter, and I just uh, uh, was not necessarily really fair with him. You know, I was just like uh, I observed his weakness. I observed his strength. I was a total strategist, and mm. I... Uh, uh, but anyway, so I started to uh, hang out with him, and he was doing this event at the airport... Uh, at the time, they were not, not. They wouldn't venture in field to talk to people. Mm. And I took a little break. I didn't know it was like a two-way mirror from the seminar room where there were about sixty guys. You could see the outside of it, 
And I grabbed two girls on the outside on the street and I started to kiss them. And after that, that was, that was pretty fast. And then my, uh, my classes started to uh, shift. It, it was hilarious because prior to that, mainly it was uh, elder women for weight loss. Those who had been on a yo-yo diet their whole life, you know, I'm doing a little bit better than I'm doing worse. Right. So, um, and life matters. Uh, certain life matters of uh, the, the typical stuff. Most of my clients were women. Oh. And suddenly my class would be s- split it where you had those women on one side and you had guys who go like, teach me, teach me. So it wasn't planned at all. It just came to me and I felt very comfortable with it. I enjoy it. So what were you teaching the women to do? Uh, overall, self-help, take charge of your life, whatever it takes. But then the, the, the pickup artist side of things started to just get a lot more traction, you're saying? Mm-hmm. And then at a certain point, did you decide to just go all in on helping guys? I did. Yeah. I did. And many times, you know, uh, I feel like, okay, well, that, but, but I come back to it. When I was on CNN with Lisa Link at the end, she said, uh, off camera, she said, you know, you, you, with the jobs that you have, you could teach other matters. Mm. And, you know, I'm totally open. Yes. And once in a while, I still do a touch of corporate coaching. Okay. I had a, a fun instance where this lady, uh, years after, she goes like, hey, you still do corporate coaching? And I'm like, I'm going to show up like that, you know. And uh, I arrive and I go, I, I got to warn you, I look different now. I got, I got, I got. And she said, oh, no problem. <laughs> and I arrive and she goes, oh, shit, you should have told me you got <laughs> pink hair. I, I just dress differently. And she took off her, her hat and she had blue hair underneath. Oh, wow. Twins. So, but uh, I'm going a lady D. Like I've been up since five, like stacking Kundalini yoga, gym, pool, Today? sauna. Yeah. Oh, nice. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. I actually I got, for a second, I got like I nine, back to you. I got like nine and a half hours of sleep last night. Nice. So I just want to say that I feel more rested doing this podcast because for some reason I just went to bed at like nine than I have on probably any podcast ever. So mm. I just want to throw that out there. I'm going to tune to your vibe then. <laughs> Moving I, into a new place. If today, I seem too. rested and also drinking coffee, then that explains it, I guess. But okay, <laughs> like, let me ask you this is that there's like a lot of. A, a man in his mid late twenties, et cetera. You know, there's a lot of different like personality types when it comes to women. A lot of times, you'll, you'll have a guy who you, you see a lot of guys these days who just really have no confidence. They feel like completely helpless when it comes to you know meeting and, and attracting women. You have some guys who will you know meet a woman at a, a young stage in their life and they'll just happily be with that girl for years or, or for the rest of their life. You have some guys who want to have you know extreme amounts of sex who just really want to like fuck hundreds of women where were you at when you sort of started to get into this because you're talking about being in the tony robbins seminar writing about wanting to be in reverse gangbangs like what where what was your mentality towards dating and sex at that time i started a little bit earlier than most you know it's not a common topic and guys we fast at like boosting it you know male ego Mm. uh but when i Research it, I had a little bit more than most, and the appeal was like, you know, I, I mean, from like 13 on, I always had girlfriends. Mm. Um, I was very sensitive, you know. Uh, lived with a girl for two years, from 15 to 17. My parents said it was okay. Total misunderstanding. At some point, she told me, like, I think I want to go back to live with my family. That's not what I heard. I heard, I don't like you anymore. We're done. Mm. I got afraid. I, I didn't want to be like, she's going to break up. So I broke up with her. Mm. Looking back on it, I was like, you could have just said, yeah, I understand that, baby. You've been missing them, right? And I could have said, perfect. We had our fun anyway. Now nah, this way I can focus on me a little bit more. And I'm still with her. Mm. And even if I'm not, but I didn't take it that way. Right. That's the part that matters. And then I rushed into like first girl that I could uh, kind of think as crazy enough to say, yes, I'll go to Vegas with you and I'll marry you now. Right. But again, lack of uh, long-term calibration. To a period of time, four years, where it was so intense with her that I had not, they call it approach anxiety, it's, a, it's, it's not what it is, really, you know, it's just like, 
how, how many steps are you taking every day to correct that? Right. That's always like the core, if we're really honest with ourselves. But for me, I had approach phobia and I had like almost like flashbacks of being with her. I was on a date with a girl, suddenly I got up, I was like, fuck you, Erica. She looked at me, she was like, we're done, okay? So four years was tough, okay? Uh, embarrassing moments. I'm like this cool guy in his early 20s in Hollywood. I'm a musician. I got everything going on for myself. I go to the porn store. It's not d downloads back then. It's those mm. almost like on purpose. They said, how can we take a thick VHS video and make the packaging, <laughs> make it look even better, right. bigger, right? Yeah. So I had a little crush on a girl in my building at the Hollywood Studio Club. There was this guy who was always talking shit. I arrive. <sighs> with my little brown bag. He grabs the bag right in front of her. He goes, I just saw you at the porn store. What did you get? <laughs> and uh, after that, you know, it went, it went pretty fast. Suddenly mm. I, I reached a place of desperation where one night I was with this guy who was a little drunk and he was so complaining about his ex and so on. I was like, I do that. I'm done doing that. Mm. So... I went through all sorts of phases, stages. One of my colleagues, AZD, he says, well, you know, the benefit of experience is like, yeah, you can find a 20-year-old that's doing quite well with women that's going to teach you a few tricks. Mm. But he's not had the perspective of how do you look back on it with the years, what can happen afterwards mm. at what point are you no longer true to you so that's yeah there's all those different flavors of guys i like to encourage everybody to become mindful of what comes after that every new generation think we got this look mm. at those those, those, those those people but uh i think the margin of success is so small you know mm. to be able to turn around and say i chose this girl we've been together for 15 years it's not always easy but we work in it mm. wow Right, but that's not often the case, and the ones that I feel the, the the most for are those men who scored very high everywhere else for their entire life, and then they come back, uh, you know, and they're like uh, in their forties or fifties, and they gotta get back in the game. Mm. Yeah, that's got to be tough. And we look at those guys and we think we're much better than them. But, you know, it's uh, the margin of success is super. It's a delicate topic. And where is it going? Right. Eventually. Oh, my God. I've witnessed my father. Top alpha guy. Mm. And there's different flavors of alpha. You know, there's alpha like, wow, who's that loud guy? He makes me a little shy. I want to be like him. But there's also alpha like integrity like backbone right my father uh, at all levels you know scored super high right and what was his journey like later in life 79 to have to bury my mom mm. to deal with that he went from like riding his motorcycle and also being a ceo of a company going all the way to the tip of mexico with his harley and I have buddies, you know, the Vargas. I, I told them the story. They go like, we don't even go like much beyond Tijuana with brand new Harleys. Yeah, isn't that like suicidal? Yeah, yeah. he did it back and forth. Wow. To now he's got Parkinson and he's managing that. Ooh. And uh, he lives alone now, 80. Mm. Props to him. So, but, but why, so I, why? I, I better be fully equipped because I don't know where it's going to go, you know. Mm, it's so, a passing experience. We're not here to stay. I mean, I, I would agree. I've seen that of, you know, so many great men that I've known who, you know, all through their 40s, 50s, even 60s, etc. They're just on top of the world. They're really calling the shots. And I've just seen, you know, so many people succumb to health problems and shit. And it is it, it really makes you think about like how long you have to be here on earth doing your thing because i've seen you know high powered men just turn into you know shrinking versions of themselves before they die and it's like that really puts it into context like you only have so much time to to do something here on earth you know yeah. we all are going to end up in the same place in yeah. the fucking ground but that can be also extremely liberating mm. and it also one one thing that's important we can grow and we will grow it's, you know, a person could be very talented. Indeed, hey, 
We don't question that. Mm. Rather successful, but according to what measurement? Mm. And it's easy to not realize we're still operating from a value system that originated in school. Mm. Where I'm constantly filtering my achievements to uh, compare to what others are going to think. Right. And I can grow strong in that until somewhere, somehow I start to go, hmm, is that really the way to measure it? Okay. Mm. And then to, uh, I, I pass it back to you, you know, I'm, um, <laughs> no, it's, uh, I, <laughs> I'm I like excited it. so much. Uh, I have days where like download of information is so yeah. intense, so rich. So. I like that though. That's, that's, that what make, that's what makes life great. You know, just yeah. being able to learn really that's like why I, I give a fuck about doing this podcast in the first place just get to meet new people all the time and take information from them I mean, it's super valuable to me um let me ask you this so around the time that i read the game was like 2009 or 2008 i guess were you already doing uh some of this stuff helping guys out and you were already part of the greater pickup artist community at the time that there started to be this sort of like big pop culture moment where all of a sudden mystery has a tv show like where were you at and how did that sort of boom uh in that world how did that change things for you i already was there okay yeah yeah for me in nine i, I never was credited by it but in 1998 if i'm correct uh, that's when I took the first group of guys. We didn't call it a boot camp, but we called it Seduction Sunday. And we, I took them to the mall. 98. 98. So that's almost 10 years I have, before I learned about I this shit. I have a video on YouTube in 1995 where I pulled this Italian girl in right. Paris. I think I've seen this. Yeah. And she turned out later on to be one like prime uh, anchor on a, a major network in Italy. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I like to be in the world, but not of the world. And maybe that's a mistake for me, you know. The, I've, I've been approached by so many marketers and so on, uh, but I, it never really resonated with me. So uh, I, I was there coming from a, a different angle, different school. And then came some guys like uh, Eben W Dating. Okay. And brilliant marketer. And the plus that he brought to the plate was the guy is super computer sa savvy. Mm. Okay. I recall I was listening to, uh, he was explaining how to, to, to really market something. And it was a kiss close. Mm. And I, I, I was hanging on to it. I was like, wow, is he sharing a similar one than mine and so on. And suddenly by the time we got about 45 minutes into the program into what you can do to kiss a girl quite fast, I was like, what? That's it? So uh, I brought to the play a very artistic, genuine aspect and a passion and devotion for, for teaching. Many of those companies also, they have trainers teaching for them, you know. Uh, they're the main guy, but they branched. Mm. And, uh, you know, who's right, who's wrong? They're doing their thing. Part of me could maybe have cashed in a little bit more would I have done this. But I just, like, uh, I love the trenches. I love to steal. I was just in San Francisco walking the streets with guys. Miami, Las Vegas. I did it in Europe, too. Mm. So uh, I was there. I probably was a little less public than most of the guys back then. Do you feel like... Yeah, when the game became a bestseller and all this shit, were you kind of looking at it like, damn, like I, I've been doing this for a long time, but I sort of missed out on some of the marketing of it and, and putting myself out there and really becoming a celebrity for this stuff. Did that occur to you as like, you know, you, you were interested in a different side of it, but that you might have missed out on a little bit there? Oh, oh yeah. We, we all have those moments. Mm. Uh, it's essential to outgrow them. Mm. Don't compare. Who knows, you know? Right. And it turned out that later on, uh, uh, maybe, you know, if I had had it sooner, uh, later on, it led to beautiful things. Say, uh, CNN, Steve Harvey, uh, mm. uh, and, and, and more is coming right now. Right now, we've, we've had that thing with the Channel 5 guys, yeah, so. uh, which is hilarious. And there's videos about the video, about the video. <laughs> I didn't watch any of that. But. Really? How'd you get approached to be in that video? 
uh, the Channel 5 video that has like 2 million views or some shit. All right. Uh, at a pure standpoint of the kind of deeper stuff we've been talking about, uh, I came back a year ago, um, you know, and I just said, you know what? Whatever the universe wants, I'm done chasing, pursuing. And so much, op so many opportunities have come. So I think it's really the surrender. Mm. I own it. It doesn't own me anymore. Right. Same thing with women. Okay. It'd be wonderful to be with this girl. It'd be equally wonderful to not be with her. Mm. And anyway, I am with me. And in the end, I will be with me. That's tough to come from that core. Mm. Okay. And that's when it's also fair for the woman. Because if my sense of value and well-being depends on another human being that's not love that's not even fun that's codependency mm. so i gotta work on that and it's hard of course at first it would piss me off so much you know to see what wow, those guys and uh i would outgrew it um it they approached me i knew that it was gonna be a, a lot of fun and i just flew with it october 3rd um uh, Another show, The Better Man, Vice TV, is coming out. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, October 3rd. I'm looking forward to see that. That's exciting. Um, yeah, okay, so one thing I wanted to ask about is, like, do you feel, or how do you feel, you know, like, the game came out, and then I feel like early 2000s era, it started to kind of become a thing where people started to really aggressively hate on pickup artist shit online. I started to see articles all the time from somewhat normal publications as well as like, you know, real feminist publications and stuff really taking issue with a lot of the things that the guys were, were maybe saying or doing or teaching in that world. Um, how do you feel about that? Because it feels like that's, that's like a real, I, I think that there is a space for the pickup artist community, for people who want to learn how to, you know, open a conversation with women. I don't think that that has to be inherently viewed as a bad thing at all. I think it's actually a really, really important skill for young men to learn. Like, you know, talking to a woman out of the blue in a bar or a club is like a fucking really difficult science problem <laughs> to figure out for a lot of people. And then you kind of see like it vilified because the truth is that there is a lot of corny ass shit going on in that world and a lot of, you know, weird, weird stuff being preached. How do you feel about the way it's been presented in the mainstream media and whatnot? Mm. Wow, that is such a, a good question. So uh, there's an aspect of it that uh, indeed is, you know, when typical guy, you know, he read the book or whatever the source was. Mm -hmm. I'm the first one to go, no, no, no. <laughs> this is not what it's about. Right. Okay. This is not what it's about. So. You know, it also grew in a way where it's 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 not healthy, mm. okay. And uh, but that's not what it really is about. Any guy that's still out there, you know, whether it's a mystery or however they have evolved, props for you doing something right if you have that longevity, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, we could open it. More, you know, there's probably also like, hey, why, why not pick on, uh, on the pickup guys? Mm. Why, don't, why don't we make them the black sheep right mm. now? Because we cannot make anybody else that. Uh, for me, we are the solution. Mm. Because at the core, the, the male behavior that would be at its worst, at a psychological standpoint, is rooted in one thing. Scarcity, a false sense that if I don't get that... I won't have and that's what we got to cure so i like to go to the core and for me i'm also here's where it's at right now okay post uh, still kind of pandemic post all that 2020 where where are we with all of that okay i think that there's a natural beautiful dynamic in which if we look at divine order the greater good it's perfect as is mm. men are always going to some degree to stir the feminine. Mm. Yeah, always. Vice versa. Women are always going to some degree to stir us. If we go back and forth, you know, that's never going to end. Mm. So we each take responsibility and uh, we realize that it's not a problem, it's a gift. So I like to ask myself, 
how can we present that thing right now and go about it where even the most hardcore feminist out there, be she right or wrong, uh, would go, yeah, he's got a point. Right. So that's the assignment, and that's how we help each other. The feminine, it doesn't matter how much we work that thing, at some point, the feminine will destabilize us. Mm. So we can, and I have this incredible protocol. I like protocols because a protocol, military term, it's something that we're not going to violate. Mm. A system, it's, yeah, that's a nice system. So protocol is live by it, okay? Better understanding of feminine, masculine. So there's the lower feminine and the lower masculine in all of us. There's the higher feminine and the higher masculine in all of us. Almost, you know, like I'm the guy, if I was IT, I would arrive, I would look at your cables, I would be, it's right there. If I was a mechanic, I would open the hood, I would be, it's right there. So right there, the lower, let's start with us. The lower masculine is we can become very rigid. Okay? You take a guy that's not nurturing that aspect of his life, uh, more and more rigid, you know, like they, 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 they very, like, their energy starts to get m mixed up and so on, messed up. Uh, the lower aspect of the feminine, it's an endless debate. Okay, mm. And it's also not healthy for the feminine. Right. Feminine needs to know how to put its own break. It's like, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I? Oh, I, I think I should have chosen the other one. Okay, baby, ease. It's 2 a.m. You need good rest for tomorrow. Okay? <laughs> right. And now... The guys that are in the worst position, they're in a debate. Mm. Also, I was on Playboy Radio, and they still were on, and suddenly we took calls from live callers. Hilarious. Every question, non-pickup guy was like, I'm with that girl. Should I marry her or should I leave her? Debate. Debate. Okay? Right. So the higher masculine, I'm in my own radiance. Mm. And what is going to help me to find even broader radiance, like the pure masculine sun energy. Right. That own radiance, uh, I, I, I'm going to have to be stirred by the, the, the feminine. And when the feminine presents something to me and I turn, I go, oh, baby, you're adorable, the things you say. And when I do that in pickup, you know, if I'm still the guy who wants to, to really line it up, because game is simple, okay? Game is you get started, you're excited. Let's go talk to some girls. At what point something that happens within you or around you, some guy is talking to the girl you wanted to talk to, the girl is not texting you back. Right. Okay? She blocked you. <laughs> she unmatched you. At what point something is going to take place and you are going to shift and you're going to become rigid. Right. And build endurance with that. So... Higher masculine would be the radiance. One great way to understand masculinity at its best would be, okay, first exposure a woman has to the masculine would be father authority. Let's uh, depict a couple examples of a father. The father doesn't give a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's not what, what we want, right? Other one is the father is a pleaser. No, I'll get you another one. Ah. <laughs> Next one, the father is just like, how dare you doing this? I told you already. Right. Eventually, come here, sweetheart. Okay. Don't drop your ice cream. Here you go. I'm still in my radiance. Okay. Right. And that's what the feminine is telling us to do. Now, how are they saying it? Okay. Uh, but some girls, they, they, they sending us those messages by going, don't talk to me on the street, mm. looking away. Some uh, girls are doing it hardcore uh, by uh, proclaiming uh, things against men. See, and right there, that's also the pure masculine. I don't, I don't depend on you to be in my own radiance. Right. Okay, so when you look at where you're at in your life in terms of the pickup and all that kind of stuff like when you were young i'm assuming you had like a extreme urge to sleep with as many women as possible does that still carry over into you being older now do you do you feel like it's worth your time to necessarily be investing and in trying to you know meet a ton of new women consistently it shifts you mm. gotta you gotta be prepared those guys who drag their feet through their 20s and 30s you know your values and your biochemistry you can still do a lot about it but they will shift no not me yeah, yeah. um so 
it's the core where it's coming from right uh right now nurturing a super healthy relationship mm. i gotta come back to nurturing me i gotta do that rapidly okay because i and uh i gotta have that in place right okay the the sex i'm suspecting that uh it's a transcendence i wouldn't be surprised if at some point I just experiment with that. No, I'm done with that. Really? I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know. Right. The impulse is still there. It's still not easy to, to just properly channel it. Right. I have my own debate is, you know, like I'm fast. That I'm like with this beautiful girl. I went to a wedding, a buddy of, our, uh, 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 of ours. Maybe you know him, Tony Dillinger. He just married Lisa Daniels. Mm. She was on uh, the cover of Playboy magazine. I'm not sure. And uh, there were a lot of adult film stars over there. But I looked at my girl. I was like, wow, she's not even an adult film star, but she is looking good. And I could tell that vibe from everybody there. Uh -huh. But suddenly my mind starts, hey, fuck it. I'm Vince Calvin. I deserve a for some or something like that so i'm I, the wrestle will never leave it's really about what am i doing in the day that i'm in right what am i doing and uh personally it's like i want to score high everywhere everywhere i'm at if i'm by myself i want to do that well uh if i'm with her i want to do that well if i'm with three i want to do that well mm. and now i've redefined doing it well compared to what to my buddy standard to this no to after a life, I'm looking back on it and I go, that was a good life. Right. But I don't know what, what I keep asking every day. It's like, okay, from the perspective of that's it, I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm, I'm, I'm a memory that will probably fade sooner than I always hoped it would. Right. People will go through my stuff. I'm gone. At that point, what what will matter? And I don't know. I don't have the answer. Right. And I want to talk about also the 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 the, the young guy or guys that are you know uh, like uh, you had. Uh, uh, I forgot the name of the gentleman you introduced to me. Like the I'm assuming. AD yeah. From uh, Compton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Compton this AD. guy can you <laughs> like? Uh, probably <laughs> never been a problem. You for didn't him. believe it when <laughs> I said this guy needs some help getting ass. Uh, I believe everything in this day and age. That, <laughs> that, I mean, I've, I've I've seen it all. You know, right. I've seen like a. The other day I was with this this guy in San Francisco and I, at some point I goes like, dude, you're black. He, he, he didn't seem to realize. I go like, Google BBC. He, he wasn't aware of it. He didn't know about BBC as an abbreviation. He didn't. No, no, he wasn't capitalizing on it. I feel like some he, he some black guys. Uh, like he was like the Italian guy that, that that doesn't use his hand when he's talking. Right, but I feel like some black guys kind of resent the implication of them all having big dicks because certainly some of them don't have big dicks. Oh, you had potentially seen it? yes, but why not at least capitalize on it? What what, what <laughs> advertise at least it? Wear it. a shirt, <laughs> BBC. I got BBC or something. <laughs> the awareness of it. I'm talking awareness right here. Right. So if you tell me, maybe this guy is not aware of the impact that it has uh, on women. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. How do you feel like the dating marketplace has changed since you know the late '90s, early 2000s, when you were really uh, coming of age in the game? How has the marketplace changed? You know, now girls have OnlyFans. They got guys on Instagram flying them out, etc. What do you make of this? It changes and it never changes. Mm. It changes and it never changes. Right. And we don't catch that because we're not here long enough to see it. Okay. And uh, we all get trapped into whatever is now trendy. We mm. think that's it. It's going to do it for me. Right. Okay. So the dynamic slightly. When I'm in Eastern Europe, you know, you you got to be no bullshit from the get go. I started to travel. People would tell me, "Hey, you know, Vince Calvin, we love your stuff, but uh, we're not in Hollywood now." And I listened to them, mm. and things started to to change for me. I would still do well, but not as well. One day I go, "Wait a minute." What if it doesn't matter? Yeah, awareness, suddenly the restrictions in this country, the tendencies here are this and that, you know. When you're a guest, you, you try to be, at least you try to be uh, a little bit more aligned with, the, with this. But when I listen to, oh, it's like this right now, it's like that, yeah, it, it, my, my impact decreased. Mm -hmm. When I was like, none of those, those things really matter. Right. Okay? None of those things really matter. 
So, so it's evolving, but it's not really changing. Get to the core. Do your work. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, uh, you're, uh, you're online. That's great. Right. What will happen when you face to face? What will happen uh, the next day? Yeah. Definitely. Maybe you look a little too needy or too like absent, and then you be the guy with like, "Hey, the sex was great. How come she's not calling me back?" Right. What would you say is like the the best basic advice that you would give to someone watching this who's you know in their early twenties, late teens, whatever, and they're trying to do better with women? What's like if you, if you had five minutes to just speak to those people? What what would be the stuff that you would uh, focus in on? Yeah, you deserve it all, you know. Don't let it own you. Mm. Uh, it's it's the dynamic I heard in your uh, uh, podcast with uh, Ryan Holiday. Uh, y you won't get famous if you chase money, mm. or maybe you you're the money expert. Okay, so uh, you you deserve all the social media stuff and so on. Why not? But. Don't go at it backwards, mm. okay? I bring value to it. It's all value dependent. Uh, value is very broad now, broader than it's ever been. Uh, and um, you totally deserve it. Now you have to be fast and you have, you're not far from high school. No offense, but you're not far from high school, you know? Even if it's seven years, seven years is nothing. Mm. Uh, so you got to drop the rules of then you're your own man. Uh, and if you're doing one thing, you're still in a bracket where the dynamic is a power to the guy that's going to be that much more free, that much louder, that much more on top of it. But it's easy to be fooled by it. Mm. It's all a big illusion. Okay. So grant yourself that fa favor. I'm, I'm, I'm often asked, what's the one thing? The one thing is whatever you do, do it slightly more affirmed. Affirm not in just one direction because, see, suddenly I could be loud, but I'm too tense. A little louder, a little more ease, and way less preoccupation, the people around and so on. Because the rules and the dynamic are going to change anyway. Mm -hmm. That's the fastest thing that is going to change. Right. And post a trend... That's the hardest part, right? Right. I mean, whatever is a, fa a, a, tr a trend may come back later, it, then it's vintage. But right after it, that's it, you know? Mm. I witnessed the birth of Ed Hardy. Mm. When Ed Hardy was out, that, that would be like the worst thing you can do to it show didn't up with Ed It Hardy. didn't take long either. That was like yeah. a year. Yeah, I remember. It's only a year after that, everybody. And now people yeah. wear it ironically. Uh, yeah, see, ironically, you make them back ironically. Mm. So you're way more free than you know it, but you got to go fast. And uh, the younger guys, it's, it's tough because you have no reference of being achieved right now. And uh, because of that, it makes you uh, want to compensate. And uh, you don't think that you have the permission to be fully affirmed right now. Mm. And that explains sometimes, you see, at a younger age, 16, 17, 18, I had some, some really good looking girlfriends. I did good, but there always was the, the older guy appeal. Mm. That drew me crazy. I hated that. Hated that. Especially these days. I think it's just, yeah, but it's you know way what, what? hard. It's super hard to compete with anyone older than you because they got money, they have success, opportunities, fame. Yeah. They've just had so much more time to acquire these things that are hard to do when you're young. So when you're young, you start to think, I need to have those things. Those things, I've known plenty of guys that are wealthy. I've even had guys, you know, there's a soccer team in Europe. The captain called me, he says, we're studs, we're famous. We still suck with the ladies. Vince Kelvin, can you help us work with the team on uh, Skype at the time. Wow. So make no mistake, don't let that fool you. See, what girls sense from men who are more achieved, the core dynamic is because I'm more achieved, I give myself the permission to be a little bit more at ease. That's where you capitalize. Mm. And then uh, at some point we, we went back talking about the game. Mm. You know, they had a project, Project Hollywood, the former Dean Martin mansion. Right. I had heard about it at the time, but I was just getting married. Ross Jeffries was debating. They were telling him, hey, you want to move in? And then after that, one day I'm teaching 
We're taking a Hollywood tour to go faster to a strip club and uh, to, a, to, to, to shop on Melrose. Each time, it's a seven-day training. The guys show up, and they're, it's a disaster to relocate. We've got to wait for them. So I go, how about we take one of those little Hollywood tour bus? A former girlfriend of mine has one of those little buses. Uh-huh. I go, name your price. I tell you. We don't want a tour. We want transportation. Mm. Oh, okay. We're barely in it. She starts to go, and to your right, the home. She, she was not registering. We don't want a tour. I go, okay. <laughs> Guys, what do you want to see? We want to see Project Hollywood. We show up at Project Hollywood. Mm. They go, Vince, come in the picture. I go, I wasn't there. You guys take the picture, but I'm not going to put myself in front of that. Suddenly, I see from the corner of my eyes that the, the mansion is available. Mm. They're a little vision. Let's, uh, let's uh, move in. I move in and I partner up with this guy that I don't know. They call him the rat in the community, you know. Uh, and uh, right away, it's different. We got about uh, 10, 15 interns there. It becomes prime place for parties over there. Uh, at the end, I think there were 160-something complaints <laughs> from the city. We didn't know a district attorney lived two houses up. Oh, wow. But anyway... So he tells my business partner, tells the interns, you guys are going to stay in the garage, bunk beds. So that I didn't like that. I was going to put them two or three per room. You know, you, you're, you're an intern. Come on. Right. Uh, you're not the one that made this happen. But And all the guys, they go, how can we bring girls here? We're, we're like interns. There was one guy that was different. He decked up his little bunk like he was in college. He pulled cougars telling them, how long since you've been in college? <laughs> You're cute. <laughs> How long too, since you got fucked in a bunk bed? <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he didn't start like that, but right. but he showed everybody and he lined up the lace for one year. Every woman was pleased with the experience. So you can't make that mistake right now. And uh, yeah, and you, you you gotta wake up here now and learn. I'd be happy to 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 help give pointers, but it's just. Observe those guys, and instead of hoping that you'll have what they have, you'll be as wealthy or famous as, the, as them, look at their body language. How do they talk? What do they do? Now, what's funny is that there's guys in their 40s or 50s who never graduated from that. Right. And the moment they have a 20-year-old in front of them, they go back to being uncomfortable and thinking, I'm too old for her. Uh-huh. Yeah, right now we turn to the girl. My, 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 my girlfriend's super young, and I always tell her, I say, you're a baby. Right. <laughs> Being old is, from my perspective, it feels like girls like me more the older I get. Yeah. I haven't really hit that point of it getting worse. If anything, like yeah. girls always want to talk about being a dad or you got a dad bod or, you know, you just like, I don't know. For some reason, there's like a comfortability that you reach as you get older that it feels like girls are kind of attracted that's, to. That's, that's my kind of obsession and, and fantasy and mission and research. I want to be able to take what we get yeah. and, and, and bring that to, to those who are younger. Right. That's real. Yeah. Um, okay, so what, where uh, should people tap in with you if they want to uh, find out more about what you have to offer and everything like that? Website, social media, all that A stuff. A lot of my colleagues, they say, if you want me, find me. That's the first step. <laughs> uh, well, there's going to be the thing on Vice coming up, uh, VinceKelvin.com. And uh, people are always very surprised. I had this one guy the other day, he messaged uh, me on my website and the message gets forwarded and he's like, please, can one of uh, your the staff member help me with this? And he doesn't know that it's going to be me. I got a couple young guys helping me to some degree, but uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very personal. I was, uh, I was uh, on a streaming, I'm, uh, what, two years ago, this one guy, what was his name? Uh, Ice something. Ice Poseidon? Yeah. <laughs> What about him? What do you do? Suddenly he goes, how can people contact you? And I'm about to give my phone number. And he goes, no. Yeah. And I give my phone number. And like 
I thought my phone was going to explode. I think I got over 1,000 texts that day. Yeah. There was also something where somebody managed texting me as if they were them and say, I liked it. Let's do another episode. Meet me at my apartment. And I go to his apartment and that's not him. He said it happened before. It was was but, there uh, anyone who met you there or was there just nobody? It, it, uh, his roommate was there. Total <laughs> confusion. And then he arrived looking surprised. He goes, what are you here? I said, you texted me. Oh. And he goes, oh, that, that happened all the time. I told Yo, you not to give his fans your, were insane. Your, your phone number. <laughs> his shit has chilled out, I think, a little bit, but his fans used to be the absolute craziest. You know, he would walk into a restaurant and his fans would start calling the restaurant saying, There's a bomb in the restaurant, and this guy just walked in the room. Yeah. He's a Nazi. You should beat his ass. Get him out of there. They would do everything. It was so crazy. Wow. Good times. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, reach out. Uh, I love the, the Channel 5 thing we did. There was, there was one thing at some point they go like, he charges that much. The prize that they showed, if you knew everything that's included, I will spend half an hour on the phone once a week for a whole year. Mm. You do the math, you're making even a, a minimum wage is making more money than me. Right. Uh, you know, I have a very unique relationship. Good things come. I always recall I was asked to go speak in... Uh, uh, Stockholm, Sweden, 21 convention. I show up, $6,000 costed me. I brought, I brought my uh, girlfriend at the time. And I arrived and I sold one of my books, Sem Night Sex, which is on Amazon, uh, for I think $24. Mm. Some of the other speakers, they were like, what, you didn't tell us? There's 12 guys here. You know, you said we'd be a big audience. I'm here, you know, right. I shall be provided. Uh, on the way back, the guy who bought the book just wanted to hire me like for some private infield coaching. So, so I'm never worried about that. So yeah, uh, go to vincekelvin.com, reach out. Um, the next phase right now will be to, to broaden. Uh, I take full responsibility for it, you know, showing up like that. But broaden the assistance that I can... Uh, Provide. I'm doing a project, you know, it was one year, my mom's anniversary, and I felt I want to do something. Uh, she's been gone for one year. What do I do? And that's something that's that's tough to go through it. You know, I, I had heard Joko Willings go like he has a little chapter on death and he goes, it's, it's, it's hard. But when I would listen to that, I remember even sometimes skipping it to the next topic and uh, I thought, I, I want to really do something special. So I'm gathering a group of people that have recently gone through the experience themselves, all ages, you know, even parents who lost their son, their daughter, and so on. And we're going to do a 100-person free resource together in grief. No mention of advertisement links or anything. Pure free service to, uh, to humanity. And, uh, yeah, the awareness must be broader. Uh, I used to coach women. Women are faster at seeking advice. I hope to uh, follow their lead. Man, it's, it's, it's tough, you know. I see guys who go, oh, I got no problem with girls. And then I go, okay, that's great. Then I observe the dynamic and I go, wow, how sad to only come from the perspective of I will do something about it when it's a problem. Mm. Isn't that what everybody does? I'm broke now, I'm freaking out. I'm uh, unfit now, I'm freaking out. Be proactive. Be like a real champion, a champion of relation. Mm. As guys, they, they come to me, I go like, wow, you know, you're uh, younger than me you got uh the odds are in your favor right now but let's make that even better and every man i'm gonna ask a question to every and any man listening to this and maybe maybe you got it if you got it give me a call we'll respond in the comments we'll know that you watch the whole thing <laughs> okay so the uh the question is this okay right now there's going to be at some point one girl, some situation, something where even though you felt that you were not prone to that anymore, you're going to get hooked. She's going to make you melt. Okay. So in that moment, let's say you just had great sex and normally at that time you do something. Are you going to turn to the girl and go, all right, uh, I'll, I'll meet you uh, three hours from now. 
but you know, I, I do that thing, I go to the gym every day. Or are you gonna start to gradually diss your own disciplines because there's a girl in the picture now? It's not easy. And then we get softer. Mm. You know, I used to live at 1600, uh, where, where all the YouTubers would, would li oh, live. Really? And they were, they were, it was not like you, you had to have something to, to, to be able to be there. So lots of alpha guys. And I remember seeing them like, wow, you know, he's holding the door, the girl's following him. He's got a beautiful girl. But he, here's, here he's leading. And little by little, you would see that shift. And then you would see them kind of like, okay, so... Grow, grow strong in it. So, do we give my phone number to see what happens? Mm -hmm. Do we give my phone numbers, my phone number to see what happens? You want it? I'm willing to try it once again. Go crazy! Oh, All right, good. three, two, three, three, zero, nine, three, two, one, nine. I would hope that my fans would be less abusive than Ice Poseidon's community <laughs> was a few years ago. So hopefully, we'll that's have awesome. I, I genuinely hope that I brought something of value here. Uh, For sure, man. It was I super fascinating to learn to, about you. Uh, to to watch all. I love the diversity of all the the podcasts, and uh, I want to pick your mind too when when I, I get a chance. Let's do it. Yeah, because you you got the you got a good life right there. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Vince Kelvin, spitting knowledge. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, all that. OnlyFans, Patreon. Like, comment, subscribe. NoJumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, the coolest podcast in the world. In the world. You wanted the coolest. You now you the got the coolest. You got it.